And hello, everyone. Welcome back to another installment of Stigler for the Details. My name is Alan Dickerson, known in some wargaming circles as Stigler. And today we are going to continue on with our playthrough of uh, the Central Front series, namely Donau Front. And we're going to move into turn six. So we're just past the uh, halfway point of the game, and this might be where things get really interesting. Um, to kind of recap where we are, you can see that the Warsaw Pact has uh, surged west, and right now there is a nice French... German wall in front of them and it doesn't look like in their current state the Warsaw Pact is going to be able to blithely steamroll or even punch a good hole through this line. Looking from north to south you can just see tons of these three, four, two, five. Uh, German units, 3-6 French armored units, and these are not the sort of units that you're just going to steamroll, even with these large uh, Soviet regiments here. So, with that in mind, and also knowing that this line back here starts to mark where the Warsaw Pact can start claiming a marginal victory when all is said and done for one of their four um, victory considerations. You can see they've got a ways to go here, maybe 12, 12 to 16 kilometers before they're able to start talking about anything like a, uh, a victory. So that brings... Uh, into stark relief, the specter of uh, nuclear warfare, which if the Warsaw Pact were to use with its huge initial allotment of devices, that could make the difference in the game right there. However, complicating that is the fact that now for two turns running, NATO has had air superiority, and Warsaw Pact would probably need to uh, make use of airdrops for the most powerful of their uh, tactical nuclear weapons. So it would behoove them to wait until they can wrest air superiority back from NATO to even consider that uh, paralyzing first strike. So with that in mind, we're moving into turn six. And before we go any further, let's look at the reinforcements for both sides before we go any further. So uh, we'll start with NATO. And we'll go on to turn six and find that there are no Donau front maps on turn six. So that's nice and easy. Then looking at the Warsaw Pact, we go to game turn six, and we see that we have here on Donau Front the 30th Guards Motor Rifle Division and the 149th Artillery Division. So these units here will jump off uh, anywhere inside Czechoslovakia. And initially, they only have one operations point. And the artillery division uh, can jump off from any of the three railheads, and that will cost them two points to detrain basically. So let's get 
one of these from the markers. And other markers. Where are we? That's this. And this is only one operation point initially. Okay. So let's now look back here and let's go to the top of the turn. And the first thing to do is friction point removal. So we have to first determine which units are out of supply and not eligible to get back any friction points. So that would be these German units here, which are already marked in the familiar blue border that denotes being out of supply. Um, I don't think any Warsaw Pact units are in any danger of being out of supply. There were a couple of check units, but even that's been fixed. They can go, they can trace along this freeway across this road to get down here. And that will take them to the road net that will get them to the east, uh, east edge of the map. So just about everybody is in supply. I don't also see any pocketed uh, NATO or German units. Let's see back here. Even these units have been freed up. And these two here are likewise out of supply and they won't be recovering anything. So with that done, we can go to the friction point removal button, click that, and voila. You can see that most units are kind of given a new lease on life. Although here there are still a few Warsaw packed units that are probably going to need a few turns of uh, respite to really start building up to optimal efficiency. Okay, so the next thing to do is the all-important determination of air superiority. Uh, yes, and let's whip out our air power table. And, of course, it's 1, 2, or 3, Warsaw Pact, 4, 5, or 6. It is NATO. And let's see if this is turn six. This is a PM or night turn. So there's no danger of ground fog. So let's do that. And Warsaw Pact gained air superiority. And what that means is it is really going to be a dark turn for NATO because we are going to unleash the nuclear arsenal and see if we can punch our way through. It would seem that because uh, nuclear weapons cannot be used on hexes that are adjacent to friendly units, many of the units here at uh, Ergolding and the units here at Regensburg are going to be immune from the initial strikes because they are already adjacent. So let's first look at the Warsaw Pact nuclear table here, and we can see, first of all, that for the first turn, 
they the Warsaw Pact has 33 devices which they can employ, and these are all use it or lose it. So this is in addition to their, I believe, 12 uh, air points they can use for chemicals um, and, and strength. But as we can see here, there are some J column attacks that can be used here, four of them, but they have to be air delivered. So this is why uh, Warsaw Pact had to kind of wait until um, wait until they got air superiority before they could start doling out these nuclear strikes. Now let me also familiarize myself with the nuclear rules and make sure that they don't have to assign all of them and then not be able to kind of pick and choose as results come in or if um, devices can be used multiple times in the same hex or anything like that. I need to make sure of the rules of engagements for these powerful nuclear weapons. And let's see here. That's on page 13, which is page 14 of this PDF. Okay, use of nuclear weapons. Single artillery unit can only fire one. So that's for the ones that are developed or fired from the RAG and DAG on map uh, artillery units. Uh, deliver deliverable by air can be used anywhere on the map. Does not require the expenditure of an air point but may only be executed if the opposing player does not possess air superiority. Within these restrictions, any number of eligible nuclear weapons may be delivered by air per turn. Uh, we also know that units that have a nuke dropped on them may not expend operations points in the next friendly player phase. Unit may be flipped to its friction point side, though, during the phase, however. So there's kind of a stunning effect. Uh, the attack only is applied as friction point gain. They cannot retreat to offset any of the friction points. NATO is prohibited from entering any hex subjected to a nuclear attack by either player. In the first NATO player phase following the attack, uh, the operation point for entering a hex is doubled for the entire game turn. And this is why we have uh, a nuclear counter here, which basically says operations points are doubled. And so we'll place that on any hex in which a nuke is employed. So... Let's first look at what we have to use. Um, air launched, we have some J column. We have four J column attacks. We have four F column attacks. And it, let me bring out the... Where is it? Ah, combat results table. So the F column attack is not much. It may not even work. There are some zeros here for um, for the defender. And I'm not sure if it's uh, deployed as a what level of attack, whether it is prepared, hasty, or march. Uh, let's find our rules and figure it out. Here are the rules. And let's see here. It's 13. Deploying effects. Okay. Resolution. 
Okay, to resolve a nuclear attack, the let me move that over here. The strength of the weapon is compared to the nuclear defense strength of the unit under attack. One if it's soft, or two if it's hard, as if a prepared attack was being conducted in flat terrain, regardless of the terrain actually in the hex under attack. Okay, so that makes it pretty easy. Okay, so Fs, these are not good, but these J column attacks are pretty good by air. We have four of them to use uh, with missiles, and these are non-divisional artillery units, which I'm sure we can find in abundance across the front, and they have a range of 70 hexes, so range is not an issue. There are five of them on the J column, there are, wow, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 15 um, on the I column. So those are ones and twos and the possibility of a three. Those can be used too. Um, See, those are Fs. Here are some more Is, 12 kilotons, uh, 5, 10, 14 there. So we're going to have no problem using up the 33. Here's a whole bunch also on the H column. Let's see where that is. Uh, those are mostly I or 1s. One friction point. So those aren't going to be devastating unless we roll ones. All right. So with that in mind, let's pick where we're going to do this. Um, it would seem that the best avenue would be to pummel these units here. In which case, these divisions can move in and try and steamroll these units here. Um, also, you would think you would want to use some against the artillery to keep them from being able to help later. Let's see if there are any other areas. This area here might be a good one to serve as a jumping off point. The only problem being that the closest units are heavily loaded up with friction points. And this entire division here is already adjacent to that unit, which it's going to take at least another turn to wear down. So that's probably not great. Uh, the other area that we might think about is this division against these units, which have some friction points here, and use that as a wedge. But then we only have one division to really get there. The checks are kind of pinned down and still trying to reduce these units. The other plus to launching the attack in this area is that uh, the area behind it is almost exclusively flat and it leads directly to Munich where they can possibly begin, if uh, all goes well, grabbing these isolation hexes here on the road net leading away from Munich. And that is one of the victory conditions. So a strike in this area and a breakout would be really, really hard to stop, provided the, uh, the, the, the momentum was really good. So let's uh, 
let's fire this up and see what we're going to do. Um, we've got four J column units. Uh, o against soft units. And we've got four of them to use here. So let's let's start. Um, where is that other markers? Expanded nukes. Okay, so let's let's start. We've got thirty-three. We're going to use all four of these J. So it's J versus armored O versus soft units. We'll use four of them here. And I think we'll use these four to get J column attacks against the soft artillery in the back. Three, four, here. And we're going to use them all in... This area here, where is the nukes? Okay, so let's start here with the J column against hard targets. And we we'll use one here, one here, one here, and one here the four j's against soft units we will use one two three four okay so these are all going to be j column attacks so let's go and resolve each of them so um, I'll start here at the top and prepare J column attacks. And let's clear attacks, J column. And we'll start here with this artillery unit, a one, it's a promising start. He takes four, one, two, three, four, and then we have this unit also on the J. He only takes one, one, Oops. there we go, one, then this unit is a four, so that should be two. Two for him. This unit is a hard unit. So, ooh, yeah. He's got a defense strength of two against Nuke, so he's not going to get J column. Rather, he's going to get um, F. That's probably not going to do much. Two. F, he gets one. Kind of misjudged that unit. We're going to have to probably show him some more attention. Okay. There's the four there. Then moving down to these four, these are the large ones that will 
still have J column attacks against hard units. We'll start there with a two. He gets three. This unit is destroyed. This unit takes a five, which is two. And finally, this unit, only one. Okay, so let's see what we've got. These units only have five to give before they are destroyed. So uh, there we go. This unit is fairly weakened. The artillery in the back, eh, not so much. All right, so let's move into, let's get some more uh, nuclear stuff here. And we get, um, so now we're up to eight nuclear uses out of 33. So now let's go to this section of, 100 kiloton units, which will get a J column against armored units and an O against soft. We have five of them, and they are fired by non-divisional artillery units. So that is any artillery unit that is um, part of a front or divisional, non-divisional artillery units. I wonder, does that mean not part of an artillery division or not attached to a division? Non-divisional artillery units. Hmm. That's really not very clear. Um, nevertheless, Let's look and see what we got. We've got divisional. Let's see here. These others are DAG units with a range of seven. Um, Fs and Js against soft units. Divisional artillery groups with a range of seven. We don't have anything within range seven of any of these units that we're softening up. Um, hmm. No, we need another delivery method here. Let's see here. Hmm. Non-divisional artillery units. I'm a little bit confused by that. Uh... Divisional artillery, which has a numerical identifier instead of a rag or dag. Cannon nuclear weapons may be fired by divisional artillery, which has a numerical identifier instead of rag or dag. So the rags and dags are within divisions. So that is that makes them divisional. So non-divisional artillery units does apply to front, front and uh, army artillery units. So that's what I need to find to deliver that. Now, I remember I was bringing up a large artillery division right back here. And... They are all within range of 70 hexes of this here. 
So this is where those are coming from. How many do I have? Two, three, four, five, seven of those. So let's assume that they will launch the scuds and one, two, three, four, five. So let's say um let's see. We can get a J column against hard target. So let's go one two, three, four, five, and that's five more attacks against hard targets on J. So let's go back in here and go uh, one, two, three, four, five around this wheel of hard targets. And they've already been hit before. They'll get hit again. So J column will start here. And let's see what we get. Two. That's three for this unit. One, two, three. For this unit, a three on J is two. So I think that's going to kill him, right? That would be one and then two to the eliminated pile. Then we have this unit, five only for him. That's two, and that will him to the brink. Let's see. I believe so. Yep. That'll push him to the brink. Five. And this unit gets a five. That's two as well. One, two. And then finally this unit, which takes two. J, and that's three for him, and that'll push him to the brink. One, two, three. Oh, he's an artillery unit, so he's not quite to the brink. Okay. That's five of those, and... Let's go for, let's see, let's go back and check on that division here, two, five, seven. We still have two more from this division, and they will toss some of the smaller ones and get O column attacks against soft units. So let's get one, two. And those will be O column attacks against this unit and ooh, this unit. Let's start with the French unit, O column, all the way on the far right, O column, rolled a two, and that's six, so much for him, and the other soft unit was here, O column, that's a one, he's obliterated. Okay, all right, and let's see, what else do we need to do? Um, do we have any other 
divisional units. Here we have a front unit, which can lob another one of those missiles. Here, that's a O against a soft target, but actually, I think we want to see if we can reduce this unit but no one is one will be actually will be enough so against the hard unit it'll be i column and we get a two that's two that'll be enough to see him off and voila we have a nice little hole through here to begin to pour through but we are not done yet we've got 33 of these bad boys to use uh let's see where do we want to go we still have more hard units to perhaps obliterate and maybe start working on this french unit here so hard units, F column is not going to do it. We need these units, divisional artillery units with a Frog 7 missile battalion. Um, H column, I don't know if that's powerful enough. H is probably going to be a 1, maybe a 2 or a 3, but more likely 1 if you're going to bank on it. But against, say, this unit, that might actually be enough. These units are both up to 4. They need 2 more to put them over the edge. So let's see if we can find DAG units or divisional artillery group units to lob those in and but their range is only seven so i don't think we have them maybe the checks do here's a regimental artillery that's not going to do it where's dag do we have any dags What is this? That's rockets, divisional artillery group, but only a range of seven. Oh, how about this unit? Let's see what the range is there. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Not nearly. Um, what do regimental artillery all except? Let's see, non-divisional artillery. That is so a non-divisional artillery group, as we discussed earlier, does include rags and dags with a range of seventy. Because the div divisional artillery are the ones that are in dedicated artillery divisions. So that would be rags and dags that can toss in the scud bees. And what do we got? Yeah, we've got a multitude of these. So let's see what we have for rags and dags in this area. We have one dag. That's divisional artillery. There's a rag there. So we have three in the Czech sector. We have DAGs from the Airborne. We have this rag unit. So we have one, two, Three, he's already used his 
four, five, six. So we have six here for the checks. And they're going to use those. One, two, three, four, five, six. And those are I against hard targets, O against soft targets. So we have five of those, and they are going to go one, two, three, um, well, let's see here. Let's start here. Well, let's start here because we want to get rid of these artillery units. Um, and I said those were I column. So we're here on the I column, prepared, starting here, I column six. That's going to be only one. That puts him on the brink, one. Here, this unit, I one, three. That will see him off, two. Um... Now we'll go down here for the third one, two. That's two for him. Three, whoops. Oh, no, that'll kill him. There's four. There's five, two. And then we'll drop in two on this French armored unit, and these are I column attacks as well. Five and a six. Ooh, didn't have much for him. Only two total for all that expenditure. And we also need a nuclear use in this hex. Okay, now let's do a count and see where we are. 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. All right, 22. Um, let's see it, what we have... Fifty kilotons. Might as well do more here. These are fifty kilotons. We have six left, but we need non-divisional artillery units. But at a range of seventy, we can likely find some units here to draw from. Let's look over here and see what we got got divisional artillery group regimental that's two rags and dags over here two more there's four and here four here's artillery units rag and from the division, but not an artillery division. So we have six. And I think we have five more to use. So let's use those. One, two, three, four, five. So these are I column against hard, 
O column against soft. Um, okay, I think we will use an I column against this unit. See if we can see it off. Wow. Only one. Oh, but that's enough to kill it. Okay, four more. And let's drop two here. I column. Ooh, that's enough. Three. That's going to kill this unit, I think. One, two, and then three to eliminate. Now we have two left. Um, we'll put one here. That's a hardened unit. I column four. That's two against him. One, whoops. One, two. And then we have two more. One more against him. There, that's what what we wanted. Three. One. Whoops. One, two. Three puts him at the brink, and then finally just one for this unit, and he only takes one. Okay. Now let's do a count and see where we are again. 5, 10, 14, 19, 20. 23, 27, so we have six more that we can deploy. Let's find out what our best units are against others. We have Fs, we have Is, Fs, and Hs. Let's see what H, mostly ones with a sprinkling of two or three if we get lucky. H, um, hmm. but that's only range of seven from DAG units, which we don't have any more of. Hmm. I don't think we're actually going to be able to use those. Cannon range is normal. That's rags and dags. Uh, let's see. Don't think we have any more delivery devices. Oh, yes, we would. Um, well, no, not, not within a range of seven. So let's use them in this area where we have rag, dag, Artillery, all within range of seven. So we have three of those. The check units have a fourth. Rockets. So we have three, four, five, six. Is that within range of seven? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes. Okay. So we're going to see what we can use within a range of seven uh, against soft units, against hard units. It's only column F. And that's mostly ones with a chance of nothing and a chance of a two if we get more lucky. Okay, so seven of them. Yeah, let's... Uh, Let's use those seven, or wait, we have one, 
two, three, four, five. Okay, five, that's F or J, F or J, J looks pretty good against soft units, so let's go for these two units, they'll get two of the five, so we'll start with this unit here, two, he gets three, unit gets ooh, only one that's two and then the other three are only F's and we'll use those against these th three units starting left to right F column five one One, starting here, F column, a one, nice, two, one, two, and then finally here, three, and that is one. Let's get our nuclear expenditure markers out. there and i believe that's it for the nuclear phase uh nato would be able to plot um retaliatory strikes against name specific units or to appear next turn. Um, but the caveat is that once they plot them, if the next turn the target unit is in a city or adjacent to one of their units, then the nuke would be expended, but the attack would not happen because... NATO is uh, prescribed against uh, using nukes on their own cities, obviously, and the same admonition against using these weapons against adjacent units also applies. So where do you think... NATO would want to use possible nukes. Who is in the best position to exploit this attack? You've got this division here, which can cross the river on these access roads and bridges, and they can sweep into this area. So we could, say, target the most powerful regiments in that and possibly eliminate some of them. Or do we think these checks or this division here might also be in a better position to do the same? Let's first look at the NATO arsenal. They've got some units which are deliverable by air. Unfortunately, they cannot count on having um, superiority. Hmm. Get these Lance missile batteries. Um. 454, let's see, West German 565s. 
which are in kind of short supply uh, at a range of 27. What do they have? 353s. That unit may not even be here next turn. Uh, what do the Canadians have? A 444? Belgian, German, not Canadian. Belgian, West German. Wow. They really don't have a lot unless they take the gamble that they're going to get air superiority back. Hmm. You know what? I'm I'm not going to I'm not gonna bother with that. Um doesn't look like there's going to be a lot of artillery for NATO to use in any event. A lot of it's just been eliminated. So I'm not going to plot anything in advance for next turn. Okay. With that in mind... Let's check the rules to make sure where we are after the nuclear phase. I think it is the Warsaw Pact player phase. Okay, uh, let's see. Chemicals are still gaining two columns. Um, electronic warfare phase is eight, I believe, for both the initial phase and any subsequent phases. Let me... See if I can do a quick check, and I think the rules will tell me how many electronic warfare points. Uh, where is that? Oh, that's right. Uh, the NATO deep interdiction strike, whether or not. It can they need to roll a one and then even then, okay. Edo deep. Interdiction, they need a one. Oh. Okay, don't have to worry about that. Electronic warfare, let's find out how many points for sure that. Oh, that should be on the combat or the tables. EW, Electronic Warfare, Don't Out Front, Game Turn 6, 12. So, um, they get 12 air points, they get 12 EW points. And there we go. Okay. So let's zoom out a little bit and figure out how we're going to move stuff up. So first of all, let's get this out of the way. These reinforcements are not going to go far. They only have one operation point to expend. So they are going to be very, very late arrivals. But seeing as I know we're going to go up through this area on the southern 
border. Let's get them started. And there is one operation point. And the rest has to come in behind. Then we have the Divisional Artillery Group, which can use the three railheads, and I think we'll use this railhead. It costs them two operations points to detrain. Oops. Okay, let's also mark them as moved. And let's start with this. Two to get here. Flip them over. Three. Three and a half. Five and a half. Six. Six and a half, eight and a half, nine, ten, ten and a half, and that's as far as they're going to be able to get. Actually, they can stack. Like so. There's the reinforcements. Okay, now let's look at what we can do to exploit the holes here. The checks are still tied up, and this unit has no friction points. So, hmm. The only danger is that these units here in the back can be counted on to retreat back into this hole we've opened up. So we need to look at isolating them. So I think we're going to try and use the checks to do just that. This is an artillery unit. All the armor is pinned by this unit, except for this unit, which has two friction points. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine on the access row, ten. We'll go. Wait, let me. Let me trace it. Mark has moved. All right, let's do this right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine on the access road, ten on the access road. And that will pin the unit in there. Um, do we want to even try a prepared attack to try and do something against this unit? He's in woods, so we can't use a mobile attack. So he's going to defend at a strength of five. What do we have here? Eight, 16, 24 with the rockets. 29, then we can bring these in, 29, uh, maybe use this for chemicals for two columns, 33, 33 against 5, 
six to one. Six to one on Broken Flat Woods, six to one starts this H table. Two column shifts for chemicals gets us into good territory. Um, there's no artillery that's within range to help, so let's let's do that. Okay, so we're going to uh, also, let's see, we're going to use an air point to lob in chemicals. Whoops, that's electronic warfare, sorry. Uh, one air point for chemicals. Then we're going to involve all of these units. So they expend, well, wait, the artillery will not be expending operations points to, to participate, but these three will. So we'll flip them. Uh, the air also is from Soviet, so we don't have any reliability issues to contend with. These units will simply gain a friction point for strength and let's see here okay so let's see what we got we've got five Eight and five is 13. The rockets are doubled. 17, 21. This armor unit is 29. 33 and three is 36. 36. Make sure these don't have any lurking artillery. So 36 to five seven times five is 35 so we're at seven to one uh they're not going to use any electronic warfare because they have air superiority and there's no artillery around to help so seven to one and two columns for uh, two columns for chemicals, and two columns more for additional hexes on the attack. So we're going to be on the M column with a prepared attack. Okay, prepared attack versus twelve twenty eight. Air point adds chemicals is a prepared three X attack M column, and we roll a four, which on the M column is a zero four. That's a pretty devastating attack. And they have to, let's see, this unit has a total of five steps to give before it is killed. Can only retreat after it takes at least three. So one, two, three. And a retreat of one. And the Warsaw Pact, if they advance, have to follow. And also any units, all units but one are going to be done for the turn following the attack, uh, but not the artillery.
Let's see. Hmm. We'll move that unit there. This will be the unit that still has operations points. They will move. No, no. This unit will move there. This unit is done for the turn. They are done. Yeah. Should they expend an operations point for flexibility next turn? I don't think so because they would probably be used against an attack to try and finish off this unit. And, would, and they are within range now, five and four respectively. So yeah, they're not going to expend any operations points. Okay, there's one attack. Um, Hang on a second. Sorry for that delay. I had a thing on my phone that I had to check. And we're back. Let's see here. Um, do we want to do anything down here? These units are not being reduced at a very quick rate. But the airborne is pretty much pinning them. So question is, do we try to disengage the checks to move forward? They would have to make a die roll to try to disengage, and that would cost them half of their operations points. The artillery, however, can move up as they are not engaged. Um, but then if they do move away, these units will be free to start harrying the rear. So there's really not much to be done about it. Um, let's see. Four, eight, 12, 15, 15 against four. Hmm. We could get some front artillery to chime in and make things a little bit better, but no. There is a village in that hex, and so we cannot launch a mobile attack. Um, hmm. Man, no, no flexibility whatsoever here. These units are in woods, and so they can't be mobile attacked either. Uh, looks like they're just going to have to be pinned down. Um, now on to the good news. We've got our 31st Guard tank in position to start to move up, but they've already got two friction points. So do these units, which could presumably move into this breach. And boy, those Canadians are probably going to make life really difficult. So they, somebody's got to get in there. So 
Let's move all these units are going to expend operation points. And let's get them moving. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Let's see, this unit with rockets is going to move up this little side access road. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, following that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. And can't launch a mobile attack against this unit. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe that's not the best. No. Nine and a half, ten and a half, eleven and a half. Move them there. And this unit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There. Okay. All right, so that uh, still have one more unit, another very powerful unit too. One, two, three, four. Or wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12. There we go. Now we got the entire 31st Division in here. Now let's get these guys across the river and see how difficult we can make life. Um... They will all take friction points to move. See this unit? That is not a access hexide. This is. So let's go one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, nine to go through the nuclear hex. Ten, eleven, twelve adjacent. This unit, that's artillery. Let's move the armor first. One, three. 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve there. And I'm going to start turning these units so I can. track of them better is the rotate okay there we go okay this unit half one and a half two and a half three and a half four and a half five and a half six and a half Eight and a half. Nine and a half. Ten and a half there. Now we've got this motor rifle. Now let's move the artillery. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight. Nine, ten, stack there. These units, one on the freeway, two on the access road, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. Ten, there, finally the rockets, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, and stack with these units. All right, so there's two divisions. Um, here, I, yeah, this unit has got to go. So let's see what we've got here. All right, well, we've got 10, 20, 24, 34, 38, 42, with the double artillery, 42 against, all right, let's just throw the whole kitchen sink at it. First off, we will... Use an air point for chemicals. Um, do we have any artillery that could help? One, two, three, four, five. He can't help. No, there's no artillery in range, so no point in using electronic warfare. Um, the air point lobs in chemicals for two column shifts. And here we can probably really add in the hurt by doubling the rockets. 
this unit will simply add a friction point. These four units in the stack will spend operations points for a prepared attack. And let's see what we get. Okay, so we have a prepared attack versus 28-27 air point for chemicals. And let's see, we also might be able to bring in helicopters if we need extra points. So let's total it up. Okay, we have 10, 22, 32, 42, 42, 52, 56. So that's 11 to 1 against a city. So it's 11 to 1 against the city. That's the J column. And we'll get two columns for chemicals, which puts us on the L column. L column. Uh, no. Oh, yeah. So that is the ultimate column for city. And we also would have gotten three columns column shifts for the additional hexes involved in the prepared assault. So no doubt about it. We're going to be on the L column. And we roll a three. And we get zero three. This unit is going to be eliminated because it's got two friction points. So three, one, two, and then eliminated. And that's it. There are no leftover friction points to expend. So all these units are going to be done. Who do we move in? In advance, uh, probably one of these stronger units will do. So that division has done its worst. Now, over here, we've got a artillery unit, which... is only in broken so we could do a prepared or we we can do a mobile assault against it the only thing is you'll notice this unit here is up to four friction points so if we get unlucky and say get these artillery units in there to help them out that could result in the destruction of a powerful soviet regiment which we definitely do not want also this artillery unit um has is going to have a retreat route so there's probably no sense in trying to pound it anyway um hmm. Okay, what else can we do? Let's move over this way. Got some pretty hard armored units there. We're not gonna make much headway there. Uh wow. All right. Let's see, this unit was chewed up pretty good. At least the armored assets are still maybe a day away from 
really being effective, but the artillery has gotten resupply. They're in fairly good shape. They could possibly start moving into the into this position. Let's see where these units can get to. Probably not real far as these units are in fairly good shape and they're in the woods. We're not going to be able to get a concentrated attack against them. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Man, this is not Hmm. Doesn't look like a lot to really be done, even with this unit poised to strike. They didn't get the most out of their nuclear strike there, so these units are going to be still pretty difficult to move. Hmm. Well, I guess the one positive is that all those units that survive the nukes will not be eligible to move in their next phase. So, maybe set up, set up some attacks for next turn. Um... Goodness. All right. Well, them in, them in. Okay. Let's see here. Two, four. Five, six, seven, eight with the access road. Three, five, seven of them in there. Okay. Helicopters. They're in good shape. Oh, wait. Got to move some units with some spine in here. Otherwise, the Germans will be able to leave the area. Uh, I need a unit that has a zone of control is what I need. Um, hmm. Well, got divisional artillery moving up here. That's not going to help. Uh, this is all artillery. Well, these soft units, they're at least greater than companies. So they do exert a zone of control. Keeps them in there. But these helicopters do not. They would be able to leave the area this way and start to create havoc. I've got a cinch this area up. So, well, no choice but to use these assets. 
One, two, three, six. That really seems like a waste of a good division. But Four, six, eight. Nine, ten, and we'll just move the checks out. One, two, three, four, five, seven, and then nine into the suburbs. stack. Come on, the whole stack. Two, three, four, five, access road, six, seven, eight, all along that access road. Still no point really in moving the engineers anywhere that they're not needed. We've already got engineers here. Oof. Okay. Um, let's see. What are we going to do with all this artillery? a bit of a log jam over here in the north and I still don't know if we're going to be able to get enough power to really make it hurt so I'm going to start and shift these guys to the south that's where the real push is going to be if there's going to be one so two for the city three four Along the access roads, five, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Hmm. Actually, I'm thinking that is going to do it for the initial phase. Now let's 
look at real real hard over here at whether or not you want to open up an attack here. This unit is in woods. So no mobile attack. We've got engineers to negate the amphibious part of it, but still we've only got 22, 28 points. That's only five to one in broken flat woods, five to one starting on the G column. Uh, we would need to bring in a bunch of assets plus gas, and we would have to have um, artillery, or I'm sorry, electronic warfare work. Otherwise, all this artillery could pipe in and lend some points. That really does not look like a viable attack at this point. How about here? Um, 15th guard seems to be a little bit stymied. These are really strong units in good defensive positions. No, just doesn't make any sense to do that. So I think that is going to do it for the initial Soviet phase, unless we want to do something with the checks here. Again, same old story. Strong units, strong defensive positions. There's really nowhere for them to go. Oh, this unit here might be able to disengage and cause some mischief. So we've got to see if we can't seal it in. But again, we've got nothing but artillery. So let's pin him in there with the airborne. And look down here to see if there's anything else, any other services the airborne can provide. I don't think NATO's really going to be able to get any units in here to cause that much mischief. So I think I'm going to move these airborne units up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. They've already moved as far as they all can. That. It's going to do it. So we are... Warsaw Pact initial phase completed, and we're going to end right there, and let's, ah, I did keep a log file, darn it, that's not good, but I can save the game, 
Save the game as DF turn six NATO one. Oh, great. Ah. All right. Well, that is going to do it for this episode of Stigler for the details. And we will see you next time.